everyone. So today's vlog is all about what not to include on your CV um, and how not to format it. And also just to give you a bit of an insight into the recruiter lens and how we very quickly scan, process, digest and judge CVs when they come through to us. Um, so hopefully a bit of an honest review on um, yeah, how we do that and that might help you in terms of tweaking your CV um, so that it is absolutely perfect for your target audience, which is going to be obviously people like me, talent acquisition managers in particular at the moment and potentially line managers. So. start off with, um, we'll talk about uh, CVs being too short. I have a very, very extreme example here, which is, uh, uh, it must be a joke. I mean, it was actually a CV that came through, but there's, there is just, there's nothing on there. Um, so uh, just to start off with, I mean, in terms of what we look for and what, what we look at, I should say, when the CV comes through, the very first thing that should hit us is, is a summary or a profile. It needs to be original, really. It needs to be true and sincere and it needs to talk about your key strengths and what you're aiming to do or, or an area that you're get, looking to get into. So with this particular CV, at least there is a summary. So there's something there. Um, there's a lot of white space. Um, there's no getting away from lack of information in your CV by clever formatting. We will see that immediately. Um, we look at, you know, hundreds, if not well, thousands of CVs really every week. Um, and quite often we have, you know, very strict requirements that we have to adhere to. Um, so you want to make sure that you're being specific and then there's a good amount of information in there. So the next thing that I would be looking for would be education. Um, that's naturally normally the next thing on the CV. Um, this person has it at the bottom. That's that's fine as well. It's not a complete deal breaker, but there's no information about what A levels they studied, what GCSEs they studied, what, what results they got. Um, which is, you know, immediately I would make an assumption that they're trying to hide something and that the results were poor. And, I, and, and quite honestly, the number of times people have, have not put their result of their degree on their CV and then I've called them and they've told me they've got a first is, is bananas. I know I've mentioned that before. So make sure you put your grade on there. Um, even if it's not the grade that you had hoped for at the time, I think just being upfront with it is better than, than hiding it. it. It just means that you're going to get prompted on it by either me or in an interview, which is even worse, because then it might just be a bit awkward and you might get nervous about talking about that. So then moving on, there would normally be um, a skill section or it would go straight to experience. But the next thing that I would be scanning for in my particular market would be the tech um, the tools, the platforms that somebody might have used, so atypical, SQL, R, Python, that kind of thing. Um, and these days you can, you can get fantastic CV templates that enable you to visualise this rather than, you know, writing or talking about your competency with that particular tool. So that's a really nice way to do it. Um, otherwise, you end up with um, people having to go through that information with you or they make certain assumptions. So try and be specific about your skills and experience. And then the next bit that you'd come on to would be career history. In this case, there is literally no information whatsoever. As I say, this is the most extreme example I've ever seen of, of a, a CV that's too short or lacking in information. Um, so yeah, put some information in there, put more than three bullet points um, for your most recent role. But yeah, the thing that I'd be looking for would be job title and where you've worked. It really, it's that simple. Um, and so you need to think quite carefully about how you describe your job. You may even, you're happy, it's fine for you to use a job title that isn't actually your official job title, but tells the audience really quickly, this is what I do, this is my area of specialism. Um, so yeah, let's move on from the CV that's too short. Um, on to the other end of the spectrum, the CV that is too long. So naturally my eye will um, quite often be drawn to the bottom left hand corner when I open a CV um, just to see how long it is because I mean, I'm personally not necessarily a fan of the one page CV. I'm, 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 you know, it's fine. Um, they can look fantastic, but it, there's no problem at all with putting together a CV that's two or three pages long, even four pages. It's, it's not an issue. If the information and the content is, is exciting and interesting and relevant 
then it should be in there. So don't get too hung up on that. And I know a lot of templates these days are one pages, but if you feel like there's really important information that you can't get onto that CV because it's one page, go to two pages, it's fine. So as you can see with this particular document, it's 12 pages long. I would, I probably wouldn't even bother scrolling. I would scan the, the, you know, the first couple of paragraphs that are in front of me and I would, I would close the CV. I wouldn't bother reviewing that CV because if it's 12 pages, I mean, this is an extreme, you know, we've seen pages, we've seen CVs rather of up to 36 pages. It tells you so much about that candidate or unfortunately, it, it means we assume a lot about a candidate if they have not been able to succinctly articulate their skills and experience. Um, so, yeah, I, would re I really would say like four pages maximum. Um, and then you need to be having conversations with, with recruiters or, or the people that might be representing you forward or maybe put together a cover letter with some extra info that you want to attach. But people don't have the time at the moment anyway, but generally speaking, even in a normal market, to be reading through page after page after page. It needs to be really easy to digest within seven seconds. That's how long it takes for us to make a snap judgment. Um, and the right information needs to stand out and be really clear. If whilst you're scrolling through it, you think, you know, this is taking me ages, that's what the, the audience, that's what your reader is going to feel like. Moving on from that, onto the kind of style of content, the way you should be positioning the information. This is a good example of a very verbose CV. So this has um, too much information for one to, to digest easily. The opening profile is in itself probably is too long. Um, the, fir the, the first kind of big paragraph, that's probably a, a, the most information you would want to kind of summarize your strengths. Um, and, and what you're looking to do. Um, because then you have, this is the thing, you, you will find that there is a, a huge amount of repetition in these types of CVs, where as I say, they're just, the, the, the information is overwhelming and it's, it's boring and it's not engaging and it's too word heavy and you just, you lose, your, you lose focus and interest when you're, when you're trying to read through it, especially when it's the 17th CV you've looked at that hour. Yeah, you're going to have to negate some some information that's it's going to be lost. You're not going to be able to include everything. You're going to have to just pick and choose your highlights. Um, so moving on to the second page um, of this, there is a, again a list of skills. Um, it then goes on to talk about softer skills. Then you finally get to the employment uh, and the experience on page three. So by this point, I'm already disengaged. Um, and then I see that there is a very large amount of information for one role. It's basically a page of information and it's not, I mean, bullet, bullet points can be your friend or foe. I think you have to use them wisely. And I, and I actually quite like CVs sometimes when they don't have bullet points and it is more a few descriptive paragraphs, but Again, it's chunks of information that the brain is just is going to be reluctant to process um, in and amongst lots of other CVs. So I'm scanning through it. I mean, I'm talking to you literally what, what my head is doing at the moment. I'm scanning through, I'm pulling out the odd keyword, but I'm not reading it. And this has been written for reading. And recruiters do read CVs, but but once they've been engaged in that first seven seconds, I'm not going to say, I don't sit and read every CV the, the, from the first time that I, I open the CV. The first thing I do is I scan it. So once I, once our CV has come through and I've scanned over it literally within even a couple of seconds and I've spotted the things that I like, which is I know what they studied, where they studied it, what their degree, you know, normally what their degree result was. I know what tools they use. I can see where they last worked. And, and what they did there. Um, those kind of six key things, once those boxes have mentally been ticked, then, and, I, and I'm thinking, this, this, is, this is good, um, and it's in line with what I'm looking for, then I will go back and start to read through, starting from the top, so starting with the profile, because that the language that they use there and how they articulate um, who they are, if, you know, there might be a bit of personality in there, there might be a really impressive fact. Um, if it's a bit beige and a bit bland, that's normally then my, enthusiasm wanes and I go to search for other things that are going to keep me engaged and interested 
Um, and that will often be, again, okay, well, who's, which company do they work for pre, uh, previously, you know, prior to the last role? And then I'll go, go back through the career history. And again, it's a mental box tick. You know, are these companies familiar for my market? Or, you know, if they're startups and I don't know who they are, do they sound exciting and relevant in terms of what they've been doing? It is a mental box tick exercise. So, so this person, again, has a, a large number of places that they have worked on short-term contracts. Some of the names I recognise, that's good. Um, but what they've done actually is they've, they've kind of, they've just, they put the bullet points because some of the, senten some of the sentences are super short and they've just put them together in a block. And so I'm having to take extra time to go in and, and, and digest it and break it down. And again, it immediately tells me actually that the style that this person communicates in, in written form, is probably going to be a good ind indication as to how they communicate verbally. Do I want to put someone like that in front of my client? Because I've already got alarm bells. Um, I'm not in encouraged by the way that they decided to put this CV together. It shows a lack of awareness as to who your reader is. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not encouraged by this at all. Um, if I was purely doing, if I was, if, if this was an ATS system scanning this particular CV, it's it's a long CV. It's six it's six pages. Um, it would, I mean, it, the the number of keywords in there um, are huge. So it would probably get picked up and pushed through to the next stage. The overall feel of the CV is not one of somebody who is sharp in the right way um again you know has like a, an awareness of how this could be perceived an awareness of okay what information do i really need to pull to the forefront of the cv there's no forefront on the cv it's just a big block of information i mean the word count just to give you an idea is nearly two and a half thousand i would move move on from the cv extremely quickly so um and then moving on i suppose kind of actually kind of dovetailing from that um bullet point heavy CV. So I've got another example here. And actually, quite often you find the bullet point heavy piece is within each role. And, and that is normally when somebody's either copy and pasted the job description into their CV, or they've literally just stated in a very bland, dry way what they've done. They haven't talked about, again, ownership, achievements, tangible results, what methodologies were used specifically, what challenges did they face? They haven't brought their, their, their experience to life. It's a very black and white um, kind of transactional description of what they've done almost. So um, in this case, and I, do, I see this a lot with CVs that are more orientated towards IT because there's, there's less of a need to demonstrate those softer skills, the commercial awareness, you know, all of those kind of things. But I see this quite often, experience kind of summary or even just a skill summary and there is I would say probably 40 bullets um, and it's a mix of information there's no story being told here there's a mix of where they've worked the type of businesses what technical skills they've got um, what techniques they can use in analytics it's really confusing but it's just again it's a huge amount of information that's just been put into bullet point format there's no thought behind it and it just it, again it tells me i think it tells me so much about that individual it tells me that the way they communicate with people is is there's no filter um it's not appropriated to a particular audience so you know if i was going to put this person into a client or business facing analytics position I would worry that they wouldn't be able to adapt their style of communication depending on the stakeholder they were dealing with or the audience they were presenting to. Um, and, and again, um, this is just from experience and, and you know, there's, there's going to be exceptions to the rule. But stereotypically, if I was to pick up the phone and talk to this person, I, their communication skills wouldn't be very good. I would I, normally I would struggle to get any articulation as to what they've done in the context to that. And it's just it's a it is it's atypical of a lot of more it biased um data experts and again it doesn't mean they're not a good quality individual this but if i was reviewing that cv in the market that i work in i would i Im immediately as soon as i see the format of that and all those bullet points i've switched off i'm, I'm not interested um and this is the thing, there are, you know, it's, it's a very candidate buoyant market at the moment, as we all know, there's, there's lots of really good talent out there, 
the first impression is the CV, you've got to get it right. Um, coupled with hopefully a video profile that you might put on LinkedIn, as I suggested, just to bring it to life even more, and you can put a link to that. Yeah, it's, you, you know, the, the, the format of the CV hasn't changed for tens of years. Um, so yeah, if, if your CV is something you've not updated for 10, 15 years, even five years, um, I would go online. I found some really good websites um, earlier just by typing in, actually I typed in um, infographic CV uh, template um, or example, because I wanted to find um, an example of somebody who's used a lot of graphics on their CV. And that's the one I'll come on to in a minute. And there is, I can't remember the name of the website, but I'll find it for you guys. Really good website with some really lovely CV templates. And it walked you through slotting the information into to the template. Um, it was a, it was a couple of quid, I think. But it would I would strongly recommend using a CV template. It does half the work for you. You just need to make sure that the content is really good. And they look fantastic. And they're really easy to digest because they're visually stimulating they're visually appealing and it's like data visualization it brings the numbers and the information to life so um so yeah finally just moving on to the last one which is graphical cvs we don't i mean i'm not interested in because i work in data if you work in you know um the creative marketing industry and you're a graphic designer then absolutely i know that this, this is what the, the kind of standard cv looks like in in that industry i had a few through um if you're going to make it really graphics heavy, there's got to be good reason for it. Again, if you're demonstrating that skill, that you're really good with understanding what looks aesthetically pleasing, um, what you know, good spacing, that kind of stuff, what colours work together. This is this is you know this is this is the marketing industry, but this is this is data that we're talking about specifically here, and even you know in the wider marketing roles that we cover as well, it's just it's not relevant unless you're a creative. So um, again, I just immediately switch off if I see something like this come through. Um, there's just no, there's no sustenance. There's no content really. It's, 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 it's assuming that I'm going to make a number of assumptions, whereas I need to be, um, serenaded with your experience. I need you to, as I say, you need to get people interested and excited very quickly. And if they've got to hunt around for the information, if they can't quite see it, or again, if it's just, if it's a pie chart, if it's a pie chart or a graph, I don't know. I, I yeah. I don't know what that means. You know, twenty percent web development. What does that mean? I don't. It doesn't make any. It doesn't make any sense. There's no context. So I would really just steer clear of including any kind of photos, graphics. It's not really relevant for our industry. It doesn't help or aid your um, application. So I hope that's useful. Um, I think that yeah, the takeaways from this are use use a CV template you know save yourself some time it, it, that will make the cv look good really focus on getting the content right making sure it's specific relevant and that you include achievements um and kind of tangible um results um bullet points are fine in moderation words are fine in moderation <laughs> um and I would absolutely get somebody else to read it and go through it who's going to give you an honest opinion and a bit of feedback. Um, that's probably a good idea. Recruiters at the moment, I'm sure, will be happy to do it to an extent. But, you know, it's a difficult market. We're trying to get the jobs in at the moment. So I was hoping that by doing this, we could kind of, you know, feed this information out to a very wide audience. But, yeah, get, get a, kind of a friend or a colleague, perhaps, that's in a position where they would review CVs and interview people and just get them to give you their feedback on, on, on what it looks like. Um, so yeah, hope that's useful and I will be back next week.